Hey guys, I've been getting a lot of comments that you want more troubleshooting videos, so I decided to make this one on how to do cylinder cutout tests. Uh, this test is critical to know how to do if you want to be a diesel mechanic or you're trying to troubleshoot a diesel engine, especially if it has an engine miss or low power. Um, there's two ways to do a cylinder cutout test. There's an automatic and there's a manual. Um, anyone can do an automatic. You just push a button and the ECM does it for you and it just spits out some numbers and says it's good or it's bad. Uh, if you really want to know how to troubleshoot, you need to know how to do manual cutout tests. And this is what this video is going to be showing. So stay tuned. Thanks. So this GM truck came in and it had an engine miss. So I hooked up to it. Uh, this is a CAT C7 engine and we're going to be using CAT ET. But any of the manufacturer's software, Cummins International, is going to let you do a cutout test. So in ET I selected cylinder cutout test. And this is the prompt screen that's going to come up. Now it shows you each individual cylinder on the left. You can select start to do the automatic or you can go change to do it individually. On the right, we have our fuel delivery, which is the most important number, coolant temp, engine speed. And normally, what most people do is they just go to start and let the cylinder cutout test start from there, and it'll do it automatically. And here's what I think for those people. Because what you wanna do is learn how to do it manually. You have much more control, and if you understand what's going on, you can use this to troubleshoot a lot better. So basically what you're gonna be doing is cutting out each cylinder individually. So we cut out number one, and if you watch your fuel delivery, it's gonna go from about 30 millimeters up to about 38. And what that tells you is the engine's trying to stay at around 700 RPM. And when you cut a cylinder, it drops the power of the engine. So it has to fuel the other cylinders more to keep it at 700 RPM. So if you have a good cylinder, the more the fuel increases when you cut it out, the more power that cylinder is making. So if we find a cylinder where it does not change, that means that cylinder is not firing. So as you can see, each cylinder getting cut out is dropping the power of the engine and increasing the fuel delivery. So when we get to number six, we will cut it out there's no change, no change at all. That is staying the same. So since it's staying the same, we know that cylinder is not producing any power. And that's number six. So basically we've identified why this engine is missing. It is the number six cylinder. Now here's the problem. Most people say, hey, number six is dead. We need a new injector, right? Let's order a new injector. That is wrong. That is just telling you that the cylinder is not firing. That doesn't mean the injector is not operating properly. You could have something with the valve train, the camshaft, the cylinder could be damaged. Um, you might have a wiring issue. It's not sending the appropriate voltage to the injector solenoid. So what I'm gonna do here is, this is called a four cylinder cutout test. What you do is you cut out half the cylinders and rev the engine up, usually between 1,000 and 1,200 RPM. And what you're gonna do there is you're going to cut out the cylinders one at a time in three cylinder groups. And what that's gonna do is that can put a heavier load on each injector. As you can see, the base fuel delivery is around 60 opposed to 30 where it was at before. And that's gonna cause it to basically your, that engine's running on three cylinders, so each injector has to really push really hard to fire. So if you have a slightly weak injector, like this one we know number six is dead. But say number six was just weak, this will put a heavier load on that injector. And um, it's a good troubleshooting tool. CAT on their C13s and C15s has an automatic version of doing this four-cylinder cutout test. But you can do it on any um, engine. And it's one of the tricks I just wanted to show you guys. If you have a somewhat weak cylinder, do this four cylinder cutout test. Cut out cylinders one through three, and then try cylinders four, five, and six one at a time. And then cut out cylinders four, five, and six, and then cut out cylinder one, two, three one at a time. 
Now this is a Huey system we're looking at here. So another trick we can try if you're doing a Huey system is we can manually change the Huey pressure and then do cylinder cutout tests at different Huey pressure. And sometimes that will cause a weak or dead cylinder. I've seen them where at low Huey pressures, one or more cylinders isn't firing, but they operate fine at higher Huey pressures. That means that cylinder's bad, usually the injector. Uh, same thing with the other range. You can go really high on your Huey pressure, test each injector, and that'll tell you if you have a weak injector at different Huey pressures. Um, you know, most of the slightly older, smaller engines were Huey systems, so if you can go in and change that injection actuation pressure, test the cylinders, uh, it's a good troubleshooting tool. In fact, you'll see when we bump this up, so I was running on very low pressure, we're going to bump it up all the way to max pressure, 3300 or, or, uh, 3, PSI Huey pressure. You're going to see that number six actually starts to fire. Not full, it's not going to be uh, even with the other cylinders, but it'll actually, it'll actually start producing a little bit of power when it's under uh, max Huey pressure. And this is a good troubleshooting tool because that means you probably don't have a problem with your valve train. Because if you had a problem with your valve train, the Huey pressure wouldn't affect that. Same with cylinder damage, you, Huey pressure wouldn't affect that. But since it's firing a little bit, once you increase the Huey pressure, that's leading it more to be the injector. And after this little tutorial here, I'm gonna talk about what you need to do to make sure that it is the injector or if it's something else. So as you can see when we cut it out, it actually increases from about 12 up to about 16. So that means that that is actually producing a little bit of power. So always remember to shut your, uh, shut your injection actuation pressure test off before you're done or else it'll stick at that higher pressure and you want the ECM to control that. So that is all my tricks on doing manual cylinder cutout tests. Now we're going to be switching over to after your cutout test is done, uh, what you need to do to check to make sure that cylinder's the problem. So we know we have a dead cylinder. What we're going to want to do is check our blow-by tube. And as you can see, this engine's running, but not too much blow-by. So that probably leads us to think it's not cylinder damage. Because if it looked like this, well, then you're probably looking at some cylinder damage. So here's the engine. I've removed the number six injector because I believe at this point that is the suspect cause. Uh, check the overhead. Overhead appears to be fine. There's no valve damage that I could find. There's no bridge damage, no camshaft damage from what I can find. Now the problem is hard to do diesel uh, compression checks, but we have a little cheap solution for that. This is our diesel compression checker uh, very specialty tool as you can see it's a rubber tipped air nozzle and pretty much any diesel engine you can check for compression now this is not you know this isn't going to give you a number but it is going to tell you if that cylinder will hold air if that cylinder is heavily damaged to the point that it's not producing power it's not going to build any pressure so what we do is we're going to spray air into the cylinder now you have to push down on the rubber tip portion or else it'll spray back in your face and see if it rotates the engine which you'll notice some of the valve some of the uh, rocker arms move here when I air it up which means it's rotating the crank which means it has enough cylinder holding pressure to at least allow that cylinder to fire so that's a little quick uh, trick we do at our shop to make sure that the cylinder is at least producing some power so, we have troubleshot it, and uh, at this point, I'm going to say this needs a new injector. Alright, if you guys have any questions, uh, just leave them in the comments section, and uh, thank you for watching the video.